All right, so uh, I've been working on the bike to get the stereo hooked up. So I'll, I'll walk you through here. I had to take the fairing off the bike so that I could get access to the uh, stereo compartment where it goes. Now normally there's a DIN uh, mounting system in there, but the, what I got isn't going to fit in there, so I removed the DIN mounting system. And this is the normal pigtail that comes with the bike. And then these are the connectors for the, uh, normally an LCD goes in there for the dash, and then one of these is the remote uh, that would normally go right here on uh, on a standard uh, R, uh, R, RT bike. So instead, what I've done is I bought this Kicker PXI50.2, which is a, an amp with iPod controls on it. So, uh, harness, and then the harness adapter, which is basically the same pin out as on uh, a BMW car from about the same vintage. So this is the adapter for Z3, I think. Uh, it's in there pretty good. I had to cut off a couple tabs, whatever. And then there's uh, a remote unit that hooks up and there's an illumination wire and the whole ball of wax for that. And then there's this cable here, which would go to normally a 30 pin Apple adapter. Let me focus there. There you go. So normally a 30 pin Apple adapter. And then I put on a lightning adapter because I have an iPhone 5S. So I got this all hooked up and it should get power uh, in the off position. So we're in the off right now. So if you go here and you press the button, it turns on and you can hear it. Uh, you can just barely hear it click on. Okay. Actually, I think it I think it might not stay on if it doesn't sense anything. So, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the cable. And I'm going to hook it up to the phone, which I'm using right now to record this. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the unit on. Let's see what happens. Unit comes on, and then it turns back off again. Okay, so that might just be enough to whatever. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to turn the whole bike on. <laughs> couldn't hear that because I think the video stopped because it's trying to play from the iPod or for the phone at the same time it's trying to take video and I don't think you can do that. So you'll have to take my word for it that this works and it does. Uh, what I really need is somebody else's phone or camera to take, uh, take video of this. So maybe I'll borrow somebody's and I'll try to do this again. Anyway, so this uh, mounting bracket. Oh, see, I put this on the wrong side. So I need to take this back off and put it on this side, and it should go over this bar here. And so that means I'll have this uh, available for for using. And then this is the mount that I got. So this is the bar bar mount that I made uh, a couple years ago for the Garmin Zumo that I had bought, and it was a little too close to the dash for this mounting system from RAM to work. So I had to go and get longer bolts and then I had some plastic spacers that act actually came with uh, one of the RAM kits. And then this thing's on a on just a ball uh, cinch here and then this is the quick release in here. I'm going to unplug this and I'll go get the case which is over here. You can see the side of the bike. So this is the, the case itself and see it flaps open this is the touch screen film and then this is a silicone uh, insert and this right here is what allows the lightning cable to come through and then there's actually just enough space in here i think for a headphone jack i have a headphone jack that's a 90 degree turn on order that will probably be able to go through there and so the phone will sit in here and then this clamps down like this and you clamp that. So now it's all waterproof and shockproof and the whole ball of wax. And then you can see it's got this diamond ram mount on it. And that, oops, that goes like that. And so then this cable will be up inside 
and that's it. So then I'll have stereo on the bike and I can modify, I can turn this 90 degrees if I wanted to so that it's not obscuring too much or whatever. I don't know, I haven't quite figured out where I'm gonna put this thing yet. I haven't decided if I want it up or down or whatever, but it doesn't interfere with the top of the um, windshield or anything yet. And the speakers sound good, they, they, they seem to work. And the only other thing I need to do once I get this all taken care of is this is the harness for uh, the heated seat that I have that I got with the bike. And I need to get into the, um, well it's right here actually, I need to get into the fuse panel right there. And I need to pull one of these, I think it's this one, and insert these two tabs into it. And then that isolates this. And so there's a, a 10 or a 15 amp fuse in here. And then there's a seven and a half in here. And one of these pigtails goes to, oops, goes to the <coughs> unit here on the seat. And then that'll give me, give me a warm butt. So uh, when it's all buttoned up, I'll take another video. See you. All right, here's a little intermediate step update here. Uh, so I've got the kicker amp. Here, let me get my headlamp angled in there. Uh, I got the kicker amp mounted here in the stereo box. Uh, and what I did was I made a template uh, based on the, the bottom of the unit. So I just took a piece of paper and then folded it over the, the hard edges and then marked where the holes were by sticking a chopstick through it. And then I taped that <clears throat> onto the side of the box. And then with my Dremel, just drilled four holes and then threaded through zip ties and cinched those up tight. So now it's, it's stuck to the side of the, of the box. Uh, and then I have routed the uh, remote uh, sending wire down through the bike and in through the grommet here. And I've also done the same thing for the iPod uh, cable. And those are now inside right here. So now all I have to do is hook some cables up and make sure everything still works again. And then if everything still works and we're not binding on anything and I need to just zip tie up a couple of cables here so they're not running around willy nilly getting caught on stuff, we'll be in good shape. And then I can give another demo. I'll go get the iPad. I just realized I have my iPad uh, that I can take video with. So I'll get these hooked up and uh, we'll, we'll see what that looks like in a bit. Okay, uh, I'm recording on the iPad now so that I can show you what, uh, what works with the phone. So, uh, here you can see the phone in the mount and I had to shave a little bit of the, mm, what would you call it? Uh, it's the stuff that makes it so that you can't bend the thing too far and you're gonna break it. Uh, anyway, I just shaved that down a little bit so it fit properly in here and then I'm not gonna close it because you can't hear the music correctly if I do it, but anyway, you get the idea. So, uh, right now, it's all plugged in and if I turn on the system, And hit play again. Whoop. Oh, you know what? It's because we're in off mode. Hang on a minute. So we'll go to accessory. All right, so see now it shows it is charging. And it's immediately music. And I crank up the volume here. There we go. 
So with these controls, let's see. This is the folder up and folder down. These are supposed to be next. So let's see if this will skip sticks on Pandora and go on. Yes. Turn this on here. What are we on now? Oh, it's foreigner. Feels like the first time. Okay, cool. And then if I hit power again, it should mute, or basically it pauses. If I hit it one more time, it should be accepting anything that was in the auxiliary input, which I don't have, which means it's basically off and I'm not charging anymore. So if I press it again, now I'm charging and it immediately starts playing music. You gotta turn the volume up every time. But I suppose that's probably a good safety feature because you wouldn't want this thing to be blasting anyway. So, anyway, uh, see, you can't really see in here unless I, okay, here we go. So, there's everything, it's all stuffed in there. It's all hooked up. And I've gone and put the grommet, not the grommet, the, this is the weather keeping portion of the thing that's gonna keep it from getting wet inside. And I've just all duct taped it back around again because it was taped before, it must have been done by the previous owner. So this is 100 mile an hour tape or whatever, Gorilla Tape. That should work. So yeah, the only thing I gotta do left now is button up a couple things, get these cables uh, zip tied up against the stalks. And I think I still have to put a, uh, uh, wow, words, no, fuse, yes, I think I need to put a fuse in there, I need to check the manual, it's supposed to have a 10 amp fuse, I think, right there, that's for the stereo, so I think I have to put a 10 amp fuse there, which is kind of weird, because it's working, so I'm, I don't know, I'll have to check that, but anyway, that's it, thanks, bye. <laughs> We're all done. Engine guard's back on. Seats are back on. Tupperware is back on. I had to take it off again because I forgot to tighten something up. And this is all done up here. So we are so playing on the iPod right now on the phone. Turn it on. Kicker comes on. Music's on. Then turn this on again. Because then, as you'll notice here, got that hooked up, and I'm still not exactly sure what part heats up. I think I felt it warm there, so leave that off. That's all hooked up, and then new engine guard clearance is correct. I think that was me, I don't remember. Uh, and everything's back in where it should be, I think. While I was putting it all back together, um, a, uh, a screw fell out. Uh, not sure exactly what the screw goes to. <laughs> um, don't, because I, I, I counted all of the ones that I took out, I did, I swear to God. Uh, so I don't know where that screw goes. And I miss a lock, shit, I missed a lock wash too. Uh, that one's got one, that one's got one. It must be the one under there. I'm gonna have to take that one back off and put this lock washer back on, but it's 9.30, I'm done. Bye.